Thank you for being here today in Israel's hour of need and in the hour of need of the Jewish people. This weekend we were stunned, horrified, enraged. Are there any other words? Grieving at the slaughter of Israeli civilians, soldiers by Hamas, and thousands of missiles, thousands of missiles falling on millions of Israelis, forcing them to take shelter. Can anybody believe the number of 1,300 people killed? 1,300? 3,200 Israelis wounded? Hundreds taken hostage? What kind of people take elderly and newborns as hostages? Who mocks scared children and marches naked women around the streets as a sign of military conquest? Barbarians, cowards, people who act like animals and do not deserve to be called human. Hamas's goals were simple, to kill as many Jews as they could get their hands on, shatter Israeli self-confidence, and destroy what we, the Jewish people, want, peace to enlarge the circle and go ahead, make peace with Saudi Arabia. Hamas has tried to break the will of Israelis and Jewish people around the world. But you know what? They failed. Because we're more united today than I've ever seen us in my 30 years involved in this work. Never seen from left to right, top to bottom. We'll have time to get back to the rest of the stuff later. But for now, we stand united in solidarity, 100% left to right, in solidarity and support for the people of Israel. Let us be clear. We stand, and I want all of our elected officials and ambassadors to hear this. The American Jewish community stands united in full support of all and any military action to eradicate Hamas and to make sure this never happens again and safety and security return to the Jewish people. The eradication of Hamas is an American national security interest it is a moral interest, and if we don't, the forces of extremism will win, and we will never be able to live in our holy land in peace. But now is the tough time. Okay? We, all know, we all know this. We've seen this show before. TV cameras start broadcasting, and some of my favorite, favorite quotes start coming out. We need to have a ceasefire. We, we need to end the cycle of violence. And this is my favorite one of all. Israel's using disproportional force. Because the way you get an enemy to stop eating you is by using equal force. Oh no. Those used to be the days, but don't expect the Jewish people to ever accept that type of, that type of situation ever again. Those days of a double standard are way gone, my friends. We have a living, thriving, breathing nation of Israel that we are proud of, and we are strong, proud of American Jews that will not accept a secondary standard to anyone in this country or around the world. Now let's remember one thing. There's gonna be, our war is against Hamas, not the Palestinian people. We want peace. They want war. They brought a slaughter. And when the Israelis decide at their time, and when they're ready, and they should do it at their own time, their own pace, to make sure that as few people are killed as possible, but when we see innocent Gazans die and people start saying it's Israel's fault, guess what? Hamas is the one responsible for those deaths coming in. And you remind every Jew and every non-Jewish neighbor and every elected official and every interfaith leader today until you can speak no more that those people being killed, whose fault is it? Whose fault is it? Do we, does Israel have any responsibility for, for those deaths? Whose fault is it? Elected officials hear us loud and clear. This was a war forced on Israel by those terrorists. We have an extraordinary group of friends who are here tonight. We know who our friends are because they're there with you in your time of need.
and a lot have showed up. And you're going to sit there patiently, please, while they speak. Because Jewish rallies get planned for a while, and then we go on, and we know that. First person I'm joining up, because I think you might know him, Excuse me. This is what happens when you have a lot of speakers. Thank you, Ron! I'm going to make it really simple. I'm just going to do it from the heart. Governor Westmore. Governor Westmore is the first African-American governor of the state of Maryland in our over 200-year history. He was the CEO of the Robinson Foundation, the largest anti-poverty organization in the United States. He wrote his best-selling book that has become mandatory reading for every child across America about opportunity. And unlike Hamas, he was a real soldier. He fought in Afghanistan and led men into battle. It is my pleasure to introduce you, my friend, the great governor of the state of Maryland, Westmore. Good morning. Shalom. Shalom. Ron, bless you and thank you. Thank you for the leadership to the entire JCRC of Greater Washington. Thank you for bringing us here together this afternoon. And I'm here to say very clearly, we are here to stand with the state of Israel. to recognize the right of Israel to exist, to recognize the right for Israel to defend itself, to recognize the right of Israelis to live without fear. But today, it's not just time for us to stand with Israel. It's also time for us to stand unequivocally against Hamas. I've led soldiers in combat. I've seen not just the direct, but the indirect impacts of terrorism, the collateral damage that it leaves. Terrorists target civilians. And, and that's, that's what, what Hamas, Hamas did. did. Terrorists, Terrorists hold entire families hostage. And that's, that's what Hamas did. did. Terrorists, Terrorists slaughter innocent women, children, and the elderly in cold blood. And that's what Hamas did. So if you stand with Israel, you stand against Hamas. And if you stand with the Palestinian people and their right to self-determination, you also stand against Hamas. So let me be clear. Progress for Hamas is not Israelis, Israelis and Palestinians living peacefully together. Progress for Hamas is not self-determination or knowing that every child has the right to grow up without fear. Progress for Hamas is destruction. And that's why Hamas is not and will never be our partner in this important work. President Biden has been very clear. The United States will always have Israel's back. And I want to be very clear. The state of Maryland stands in lockstep. Now, I know that our solidarity does not erase the pain of these attacks. My heart is broken 
and continues to break for the victims and their families. And it's in times like these, when the pain is so deep and the pain is so real, that I turn to the place that has always offered me solace and the place that has offered me peace. And that's my faith. I turn to my faith. I've spent the past days reaching out to faith leaders. I've spoken with rabbis, I've spoken with imams, I've spoken with ministers, I spoke with my own minister. And in every conversation, two things have been very clear. First, that the attacks by Hamas last weekend were horrifying and defy every common principle of morality. And second, that we must do everything that we can to come together, to condemn this violence, to work and to build security for everyone in the region. And that means standing against Hamas and all who aid or support their vile mission. That means standing with the Jewish people, both at home and also around the world. That means recognizing that the innocent victims and their families will need to be supported, uplifted, and prayed over now and tomorrow. And that means rooting out anti-Semitism, anti-Muslim hate, and fighting bigotry in all of its wicked forms. Buried beneath this very plaza, there's a time capsule. It contains a Bible that once belonged to Dr. Martin Luther King Jr. And if we could retrieve that book, and if we could read it together, I would turn to the third section of the Hebrew Bible, the book of Psalms, which reads, from the ends of the earth, I call to you. I call as my heart grows faint. Lead me to the rock that is higher than I. Together we gather in solidarity. Together we gather in peace. Today we remain committed to a long-term peace. And I speak for my entire state when I say, we stand with Israel. So let's keep marching. Let's keep marching towards that higher rock. God bless you. Shalom. And thank you so much for all you do. And now, first of all, I want to thank you all. I want everybody to be aware of how many organizations and dozens of Jewish organizations and others got together to sponsor this rally. Jointly sponsored by the Jewish Federation of Greater Washington, the JCRC, the ADL, and the American Jewish Committee. First, I'd now like to bring up Elav Benjamin, the Deputy Chief of Mission of the Embassy of Israel to the United States. Elav. I want to begin today by thanking President Biden for consistently having our back, now and always.
Thank you, United States Congress and members of Congress present here. Thank you, Governor Moore. Thank you, all state and local elected officials, rabbis, clergy from all the faiths, community partners and sponsors, and all the American people for your unequivocal support. Last Shabbat, Saturday morning, as the world was preparing to celebrate the Jewish holiday of Simchat Torah, Israelis living in Kibbutzim and Yishuvim and Moshavim around the Gaza Strip and thousands attending a nearby music festival in the Negev awoke to anyone's worst nightmare. Hamas terrorists infiltrated these communities, causing unimaginable devastation, slaughtering entire families, decapitating soldiers, and separating loved ones, taking over 100 civilians and soldiers hostage. Over 1,300 people in a single day, the largest number of Jewish deaths in one day since the Holocaust. Each victim had a name, a family, and friends, and hopes and dreams for the future. Lechol ish yesh shem. Each person has a name. Hamas is a barbaric terrorist organization that incites violence and attacks civilians, taking even its own people as hostage, disregarding the norms and rules of international law, and indeed of humanity. Hamas is ISIS. Hamas terrorists are not freedom fighters who represent the aspirations of the Palestinian people. Rather, their fundamental goal has always been very clear, to destroy the state of Israel and to annihilate and murder Jews. Israel did not choose to start this war, but Israel will end it. We will ensure that the Hamas war machine is eliminated. Israel will continue to take all the necessary steps to try Hamas infrastructure and strongholds. And for this, we will not apologize. And let me be clear, in case anybody has any doubts. Whilst the past years saw deep divisions from within Israel, there are no sides now. Israelis stand united in sorrow, compassion, solidarity, and determination. As we look ahead in the coming days and weeks, the media's portrayal of this war will shift. There will be images and reports that will prompt some shifts to the narrative. But we must not forget what happened on October 7, 2023, the morning of Simchat Torah. We cannot and we will not forget the brutal, horrific murders of over 1,300 civilians, soldiers, and police. We must remember the innocent civilians who were slaughtered in their beds in Kfar Aza, those burnt alive in Beri, those kidnapped from their families in Achaloz, and unfortunately, so much more. As we respond, we will do so with the IDF acting in accordance with international law, morals, and ethics. It is paramount that the United States continues to support and stand shoulder to shoulder with Israel. Our two countries were founded on the bedrock of freedom and democracy with a shared commitment to oppose and combat terrorism. Israel is at war.
Yet Israel is resilient, Israel is united, and Israel will prevail. We will win this war. Thank you all for your ongoing support. Am Yisrael Chai. The people of Israel do live. Thank you. And now it's my pleasure to bring up Gil Proust, the Chief Executive Officer of the Jewish Federation of Greater Washington. Wow. The people in the front, if you can look back, go much further back. Thank you, everyone, for coming out today and for standing with Israel. This is so critical, showing up, being together, making a statement. Like all the he said, every person has a name. We need to make sure that we remember the people and read their names, every single one of the 1,300 people that was killed, that was murdered over this past weekend. We, we cannot, cannot let their names go in silence. Watching those murders, watching the people, families, children, seniors, young people just butchered while they were trying to lead their lives in peace, one after another. I don't know about you, but the images brought me back to the 1940s Germany they brought me back to my images that I had of pogroms in, in, in Russia and in the Pale of Settlement. We need to remember those. But at the same time, we need to know that the world of 2023 is not the world of 1880 or 1940. There are three critical differences that we can never forget. First, we have a state of Israel. We have a country that will stand up and defend Jews around the world. They will be there every single time that we are under threat and they will make sure that we can live in peace. Second, we have a friend in the United States. This country is standing up and saying at this moment in time, we stand with the Jewish community and we stand with Israel to defend itself and to make sure that this never, ever happens again. And finally, we have you. You are the people who can make a difference. The Jewish community of this country and our friends and allies can stand up and demand that this country continue to support Israel, continue to make sure that it can defend itself, and we can be part of that effort. We cannot be silent, we cannot be quiet, we must raise our voices, we must call, and we must insist that this country continue to defend and support Israel's right to defend itself against these Hamas, beyond terrorists, these Hamas, ISIS, just, I can't even imagine the word. And so, as we go forward, make sure you stay connected, make sure you feel your individual and collective power. We have that in this day and age. This is not 1880, this is not 1940. This is 2023. Let's feel it, let's use it, and let's make a difference. Thank you. I am very grateful that Republican Congresswoman Claudia Tenney is here today, because she has a speaker vote, I think, in about 20 minutes. She's a Republican legislator for New York who just three days ago introduced bi -legis bi -legislation, bipartisan legislation called Operation Swords of Iron 
to immediately appropriate $2 billion to restock Iron Dome. She visited Israel in 2019, is from my home state of New York, and is a great defender of the security of the Jewish state. Congresswoman. Thank you so much for all of you for being here and today showing your support for our Jewish and Israeli brothers and sisters. As you all know and you've heard today from all the speakers, 1,300 Israelis that we know of have been killed, murdered, including at least 25 Americans. 3,000 Israelis have been injured and over 150 have been kidnapped. Let's be clear, this is Israel's 9-11, as you've heard so many people say. It is Israel's Pearl Harbor, and we will always stand with our greatest ally, the State of Israel. While we must do everything we can to support Israel's Operation Swords of Iron, there are three things that I believe rise above the rest. Military support, holding Iran accountable, and, cut and cutting off funding for terrorist organizations like Hamas and Hezbollah. Let's First and foremost, we must provide Israel with the military support it needs to combat these worse than barbarians, as was alluded to by the prior speaker, that have committed these heinous war crimes, and they are war crimes against the Israeli people and American citizens. This, of course, includes resupplying the Iron Dome. Over the last week, Hamas has fired over 6,000 rockets into Israel, and over 590 have required Iron Dome interceptors. Uh, this week, uh, I'm honored to introduce the Operation Swords of Iron, Iron Dome Supplemental Appropriations Act to appropriate $2 billion to restore and replace the Iron Dome. $2 billion is just the start, but we must urgently get the ball rolling and start providing assistance immediately to Israel. And I'm so pleased and so honored that 38 already and counting of my colleagues, including many, many bipartisan sponsors, uh, are in support of this bill and this initiative. We must also provide Israel with the parts that it needs from a, for, for its military, American, American military equipment, precision guided munitions, the PGMs you've heard people talk about. We must also ensure Israel always maintains its qualitative military edge as required by law, and this is to ensure that the resource, it has the resources it needs and will not be outstripped by uh, bad actors like Iran. While Hamas launched this attack, we all know that Iran is behind this. Iran funds, trains, arms, and advises terrorist groups like Hamas and Hezbollah, and reports have stated that Iran may have indirectly greenlit this attack. We must abandon the JCPOA the Iran, Iran nuclear, nuclear deal, deal and, and the missions that it did fail to meet. And we must fully enforce our sanctions on Iran. We must work with our allies to designate Hezbollah and is the Islamic Revolutionary Guard Corps as terrorist organizations. It's something I've been pushing for for several months. We must work to initiate snapback sanctions on Iran to ensure that ballistic missile sanctions on Iran never expire. Please urge every member of Congress to do this. I'm also honored that APAC recently joined me in the fight to encourage our E3 allies to immediately initiate snapback sanctions. We don't have a lot of time left for this to be done at the UN. Please, let's continue this fight. It's also my privilege to lead a bipartisan letter with Representative Jared Moskowitz to encourage the Biden administration to take a tougher stand against Iran and implement the objectives I've set forth. Finally, we must cut off funding for Hamas and Hezbollah, funding international organizations that also assist these terrorist organizations directly and indirectly. Here's an example. Hamas has been known for recruiting and hiding its weapons in UN relief and works agencies like UNRWA. 
schools. In the schools. This is why next week I will introduce the ha Hatifa Act to prohibit American funding for international organizations which directly or indirectly fund Hamas. We can we cannot allow this terrorism to continue to hide behind children, to hide behind the elderly and people who, who are, are vulnerable. I just want to thank all of you. This is tremendous support. We are so pleased that you're out here today and standing with our Jewish and Israeli friends. And I just want to say God bless all of you, the United States and the great state of Israel. And now we have Ania Ali, President and CEO of the American Muslim and Multi-Faith Women's Empowerment Council. Anila, thank you for joining us here. Salaam Alaikum. Shalom, my brothers and sisters. I speak to you in the name of Allah, the most gracious, the most merciful, the God of Ibrahim salam, the God of my Prophet Muhammad wasallam. My brothers and sisters, I am here to take a moral stand. I condemn Hamas. crimes against the Jewish people and the state of Israel. And I am going to tell you, I am a proud Muslim. And I am here to say, not in my Allah's name. Do not kill people in my Allah's name. Do not desecrate lives of the people, of the children of Ibrahim, in my Allah's name. I'm here to stand with you in solidarity at this time, this very dark time for you. Probably the darkest since the Holocaust. And I tell you, I am so sorry that people have stolen my beautiful religion just as they did after 9-11. I also want to tell you, they do not represent me. Neither do they represent many, many Muslims of conscience. But I am here today, joined by Imam Talib Sharif from the Masjid Muhammad, who could not be here, but is here with you. He sends his prayers to all of you. And he says he stands with you. Also, I will be going to the masjid to pray for you. Imam Talib Sharif and I had taken a group of Muslims, Muslim Americans, to Israel to build peace. Hamas is the enemy of peace, and we will not let them win. I ask Allah, and I want you to join me in this prayer. I ask, Ya Rabb, forgive us for we have maligned your name. Prophet Muhammad Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam taught us that the greatest blessing is to be blessed by Khalil Allah, the friend of Allah, Prophet Abraham. In our prayers, we pray for you 17 times a day. Let us unite in a prayer for those victims of Hamas who were killed in, my, in the name of my religion. And let us ask Allah, the God of Abraham and the God of Muhammad, salam, to find a way that we can stop this hate around the world. Inshallah, 
and let us lead and join hands in our prayers. Allahumma salli ala Muhammadin wa ala ali Muhammadin kama sallaita ala Ibrahima wa ala ali Ibrahima inna ka hamidun majid Allahumma barik ala Muhammadin wa ala ali Muhammadin kama barakta ala Ibrahima wa ala ali Ibrahima inna ka hamidun majid Thank you my brothers and sisters And we know support has been coming in from around the world. We've seen on buildings throughout Europe. We've seen them highlighting the, 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 uh, the colors of the Israeli flag on all capital buildings around the world. And with us today, we have several leading diplomats. And I'm going to call you up, gentlemen, at the same time. We have the ambassador of Germany, the ambassador of Hungary, the deputy chief mission officer of the United Kingdom, the deputy, the deputy French ambassador to the United States, the Italian deputy chief of Minute. It's not just America. Stand up and show our European partners how much we appreciate your support. First the German ambassador and then the Hungarian ambassador. Thank you very much for being able to speak to you. I lived seven years in Israel. I worked in Israel. I was there as a junior diplomat in the early 90s and as the German ambassador 20 years later. This brutal attack of Hamas on Israel is not an abstract horror. For me, it's a very concrete horror when I speak to friends in Israel. What matters now is that we stand with Israel the German Chancellor expressed this in a special session of the German Parliament yesterday, and it is today that the Foreign Minister of Germany visits Israel to express our solidarity. I just want to say, we as Germans, who uh, as a nation are responsible for the worst of crimes, hold a special responsibility, and we'll live up. Thank you. Shalom, uh, dear friends. Uh, I'm the Hungarian ambassador, and I'm bringing a message from my country, the Hungarian society, and the leadership of Hungary. And the message, the most important message, is that we share your grief. We share the grief of those in Israel, who have lost the most precious, who have lost their, their loved ones. Uh, we express our deepest condolences, and the leadership of the country, the President, uh, Prime Minister Orban, on Saturday immediately expressed our unwavering and unconditional support to the State of Israel and to the people of Israel. And we very strongly expressed that Israel has a right to defend her own citizens. It's very really important. Many people, for understandable reason, compare what happened last Saturday to the Holocaust, when innocent Jews were killed just for being Jews. I myself was the president of the International Holocaust Remembrance Alliance, still leading the Hungarian delegation. And you should know that in Hungary, we do not allow any trace of anti-Semitism. And while the words of hatred uh, and the pro-Hamas, pro-terrorist demonstrations are taking place in many cities all around Europe and also in this country. Uh, you should know that the Prime Minister Orban just today banned all pro-Hamas, pro-terrorist demonstrations. There is no place for hatred in the streets of Budapest and elsewhere in Hungary. There is no place for anti-Semitism. We stand with Israel just as much as we stand with the Jewish community here and elsewhere. and thank you for the organizers. Thank you. Friends of Israel, my name is James Roscoe, and I'm the Deputy British Ambassador here in Washington, D.C. The UK joins all of you here today in this square to stand with Israel. The UK government unequivocally condemns the despicable terrorist acts by Hamas 
against the Israeli people. We cannot be more clear. Hamas is a terrorist organization and terror must be defeated. And as we've just heard, Hamas does not speak or act for the Palestinian people. Its actions have put people in Gaza at risk, civilians that it purports to represent. I say again, terrorism must be defeated. Now, we're here today because the UK has offered Israel whatever support she needs, whether that's diplomatic or something to ensure its security. And the British Prime Minister has ordered the deployment of further military assets to the Eastern Mediterranean in support of our US colleagues who are already there. We do this to prevent further escalation, but to stand with Israel. And our Foreign Secretary this week visited to meet the President and to meet the Government of Israel to pledge our continuing support. Those who would seek to do Israel harm and inflame regional tensions should have no doubt we stand with Israel today, tomorrow, and always. There's a man in the crowd. There's a gentleman in the crowd who has a sign. And that sign says, this time we have a state and an army. He's right. We stood with you. We stood with you in April to mark 75 years of the state of Israel. We will stand with you to mark 100 and 150. Thank you. Bonjour. I am Aurélie. I'm the Deputy Ambassador of the French Embassy. And I'm really filled with emotion as we join you here today to honor the victims of the unspeakable terrorist attacks by Hamas against Israel. I don't think words can describe what happened on Saturday. A murderous and blind hate, cruelty unleashed at a level that is hard to comprehend for any human being. We share the grief of the Israeli people. We all stand with Israel on its in this terrible moment. Our solidarity with Israel is unwavering. Thirteen French citizens were also the victims of this bloody rampage, and 17 are still missing, among them children. I yeah, bring our children home. I, I find comfort in being here with you all, in sharing our sadness and our mourning together. Nothing justifies terrorism. Nothing. And, and in our fight against the evil that is terrorism, we must always uphold our values and our humanity. At the highest level, France has actively reaffirmed Israel's right to defend itself. France is also at the forefront of diplomatic efforts to, pre to prevent an escalation of the conflict and spill over into the West Bank, Lebanon, and the wider region. The fight against terror cannot replace the quest for peace, and this is what France and its allies and partners would continue to work for. But today, as, as I share with you this very sad moment on the Freedom Plaza, I didn't really want to deliver a speech. What I really want to be doing today um, is to hold my Jewish friends and family very close in my heart and at my arms and to tell them that I will always stand by your side and I will be always watching your back. We are and we will always be stronger together. Thank you. Buongiorno. My name is Alessandro Gonzalez. I'm here today to bring also the voice of Italy. Uh, thank you. 
and, and first and foremost, this voice is saying that we stand firmly in support, unwavering support to Israel. So I'm just repeating something that President Mattarella, Prime Minister Meloni, Minister of Foreign Affairs Tajani have said to the world and to their Israeli counterparts in the last days. We completely support the right of Israel to defend itself. And how can we deny this right to defend yourselves? Israel to defend itself, its people to defend themselves in front of such a brutal, unprovoked, unprecedented, unspeakable attack against humanity. Let me say that Hamas doesn't represent the Palestinian people. Hamas is just terror, nothing else. I want to be sure, but I, let me say one thing about my hometown, about Rome. Uh, this brutal attack has brought us back uh, to very painful memories of hatred against the Jewish people. Uh, this has a very precise name, anti-Semitism. This is the denial of all our values. But we also experienced a millennia of Jewish resilience. And this incredible resilience has brought to Rome, my hometown, the most ancient Jewish community outside Israel. And thank you. And this is for our Jewish community in Rome, which so highly contributed to the development, uh, the culture of my own country, of my own city. Italy would not, would not be the same without them, and our identity would not be the same without them. And I want to really to remember uh, the work that they're doing in my, in my city and for my, for my country. So just let me conclude by saying that terror is not going to prevail. Humanity is going to prevail. Our values are going to prevail. Peace is going to prevail. Shalom. Not only do we enjoy tremendous support from the international community, but I think we'll bring up a few members of the Monk of the Maryland local delegation. Former majority leader Steny Hoyer. Does this man need any introduction? Congressman Jamie Raskin. Our friend John Sarbanes, who represents part of Montgomery County and Baltimore. Glenn Ivey, our newest member of the delegation, who I took to Israel in 2005, and Congressman David Schroen. We are going to start with Steny, and then we will continue through our Maryland congressional leadership. Congressman Hoyer. We've had dark days before. We're having dark days now, I'm not going to give a long speech. The President spoke for me. The President spoke for America. The President spoke for justice. There's a song that is usually used for some cause, and then it says, like a tree standing by the river, we shall not be moved. We shall not be moved, Israel. We shall not be moved, America. We shall not move all those in this world who are for justice and fairness and international law. Criminals must be called to account. I 
and we, we tell, tell our Israeli, Israeli friends that we recognized in 1948, minutes after they announced as a state. And we have not been moved since then, and we will not be moved tomorrow. What the President of the United States said, we are absolutely committed to being with Israel today, tomorrow, and always. This is our duty, and indeed this is the world's duty that set aside a land, a land that Israel had occupied for millennia, and said, this is your place of security. This is your place of sovereignty. This is your place of safety. Let it always be with our help and with our commitment and with our might. Thank you to all of you for being here today in what is a place, a space of righteousness. We are righteously united against Hamas, against terrorism, against anti-Semitism, wherever it rears its ugly head. And we stand, as all of us have said, in this show of solidarity with the people of Israel, with the Jewish people, the world over. We feel the pain of those that have experienced this tragedy directly. Our hearts go out to all, and many are in this crowd today who are feeling that pain indirectly. There's not a lot that needs to be said. We are here. We say to the state of Israel, we say to the Israeli people, we say to the Jewish community, we are here, we are with you, we are united in our minds with resolve, we are united in our hearts with pain, we are standing next to you, arms interlocked. Thank you. I will be joined, joined by, by Congressman, Congressman Glenn Ivey. Greetings at, at this moment of crisis. crisis. Uh, I, I, I wanted to say this. Ron was, was kind enough to take me to Israel um, at the time of the disengagement. And we flew and we landed. And as we were there, as we were getting off the bus to go to the hotel, I went inside and I saw people being dragged out of their houses. Israelis who lived in Gaza were being removed from that site. And I was shocked at the fact that Israel would take that step in an effort to give Gaza and a step towards peace. And we were told at that time by some of the people who opposed it that Gaza would be used to launch attacks against the nation of Israel. And I'm sad to say that not only did that come true, it came true in the worst possible way that it could. I had a chance to go back to Israel just a few weeks ago, and we were sitting there as a delegation of 10 members of Congress sitting with Mr. Netanyahu and his cabinet, and they were talking about the impact of the Abraham Accords and how this might be a moment where Israel was getting closer and closer and closer to peace in the region. Hamas knew that, and that's why they launched these horrific, despicable attacks last weekend. So I say this, Hamas cannot win. We've got to make sure, absolutely, they must be dismantled, they must be destroyed. The United States stands with you in this effort because we need it to happen too. And beyond that, this is my request. 
We, we cannot, cannot allow Hamas to be right in, dis in, de in, in derailing the peace effort. Once they're beaten, we continue to move towards peace. We continue with the Abraham Accords. We move towards peace and victory in the region. With your help and your guidance, we will get there. Thank you, God bless, and stay strong. And now Congressman David Trone, who knows a thing about the Abraham Accords, is the co-chair of the Congressional Caucus on the Abraham Accords. Congressman Trone. Shabbat Shalom. Good to be here today. It's a tough day for the whole world, frankly. And I really am so proud of what Steny talked about, and that's President Biden. How he stood up for Israel. He made it crystal clear. We're one country. We're united together. And that will not change. I was proud of Secretary Blinken as he traveled to Israel. And his statements were so consistent with the President's message. We will be there. There will be hard times. It will be difficult as the Army goes through Gaza. There will be more loss of life. Soldiers and so many innocents will also die. But Hamas is an evil. It is ISIS. It is Taliban. It is no different than we see down the street at the Holocaust Museum. We've seen that at Yad Vashem. We've all seen it. We've all tried to imagine it. Yes, never, never, ever again. Never again! Never again! Never again! Never again! Never again! Never again! We know that. We know that in our hearts. But it did happen again. And because it did happen, we've got to re refocus again. And we've got to be there side by side with Israel as we move forward in these tough days. But the barbarism, the savagery, mind-boggling, absolutely mind-boggling. So the United States, the Congress, will be working in a bipartisan way. It has to be bipartisan. And that will happen for sure. And as a co-chairman of the Abraham Accords, we've got to continue that effort, that effort of people to people, diplomacy, that's how we're going to create a two-state and a lasting solution. But know this, everyone in Congress will be with Israel on now and forever, because never again. Thank you. That's right, USA. We now bring up Congressman Jamie Raskin. Brothers and sisters, we, we demand the immediate safe return of all 150 hostages, among them both Israelis and Americans, among others, held captive by Hamas in Gaza today. We place priority on their release and their return to freedom and safety with their families. We will not rest until we get them out. Any harm brought upon them is a war crime and will be punished along with all the murders and assaults committed by rampaging Hamas terrorists in Israel. The IDF has said that the total blockade of food, water, fuel, and medical supplies to Gaza will not end until the hostages are released. They must be released immediately both for their own safety and for the sake of two million civilians in Gaza who have been turned into hostages as well by the lethal criminality and derangement of Hamas. We will not forget the massacre of 260 beautiful young people assassinated at the Nova Music Festival who had come together only to celebrate their love of music and their love of life. We will not forget more than 100 Israelis savagely murdered at the Berry Kibbutz. We cannot and we will not forget 
the slaughter of babies, the brutal assaults on Israeli women and girls, the rampant and unprovoked destruction of human life, villages, and homes. America stands side by side and shoulder to shoulder with Israel as it exercises its clear and indisputable right to military self-defense under the rules of international law and its clear and indisputable right to exist as a nation in the community of nations. As a member of Congress and a defender of human rights, democracy, and freedom all over the world, I am determined to see the total destruction of Hamas, a terrorist death cult, a terrorist death cult conceived in the poisonous fusion of Nazi and Islamist ideology. Since its founding in 1987, Hamas has called for the obliteration of Israel and for jihad against the Jewish people. It has circulated the toxic lies of the protocols of the elders of Zion. It has promoted suicide bombing, terrorism, and it's done everything in its power to sabotage diplomacy, nonviolent conflict resolution, and the promotion of peace and human rights for everyone in the Middle East. Hamas has tried to turn the political conflict between Israelis and Palestinians into a religious holy war between Muslims and Jews, a sinister goal that the world must, de must deny to them as we must deny to them their goal of endless cycles of violence and bloodshed that will steal precious lives, Israeli and Palestinian, for generations to come. We must reject the effort by Hamas to conflate their vicious, terrorist, anti-Semitic mission with any legitimate political program. My friends, Israel has now formed a unity government, a government of right, left, and center, secular and religious across all lines of partisan division and political ideology to defend the people in the land of Israel. And I wish we could do the same thing in the House of Representatives. But, but I know that even without a Speaker of the House and elected leadership, even without the ability to legislate in the face of this maddening political, political paralysis on the Hill, members of Congress and the American people are united overwhelmingly behind President Joe Biden and the people of Israel in this struggle. President Biden and Secretary Blinken have made it clear that our country will stand unwaveringly behind Israel because we are liberal democracies dedicated to freedom and human rights, bound by the rule of law, committed to the laws of war, and devoted to the progress of human civilization over terrorism. We are nations that oppose terrorism and its paradigm practice which is the targeting of innocent civilians, including children and babies, for death and destruction for political reasons. As a Jewish American who has traveled many times to Israel, the West Bank, and the region, both in my official capacity and to see my own family and friends and students there, my heart goes out to everyone whose families and friends have been wounded, killed, traumatized, displaced, and touched by this unfolding nightmare in the region. Today, we are living with a war thrust upon us by terrorists, but we must pray and work for peace, even as Israel, supported by its allies, wages a war of just self-defense to, to dismantle the terrorist network of Hamas. My, my father used to say to us when we were growing up, when everything looks hopeless, you are the hope. Now is the time for all of us here to be the hope, to carry the light, even in a time of darkness. Thank you. What an incredible delegation we have. Full, like the President of the United States, full support. I'd also like to note that Congressman um, Don Beyer of Virginia is here as well joining us. Now I'd like to bring up Eileen Filler, Corn, and Brian Schwab.
Eileen Philicorn made history as the first Jew and the first woman to be Speaker of the House of Delegates in Virginia. And Brian Schwab is our newly elected Attorney General here in D.C. First Eileen, then Brian. Thank you for joining us. Wow. What a view. I stand before you as the 56th Speaker of the House, the only Jewish woman to serve as Speaker of the Virginia House of Delegates in the over 400-year history. I stand before you as a proud American Jewish woman. I stand before you as a supporter of Israel. Having lived in Israel in 1982 and through countless visits throughout the years to Eretz Yisrael, including three visits just the last two years, I stand before you with a broken heart. A broken heart for the state of Israel. A broken heart for the people of Israel. A broken heart for the Jewish people, Israelis, Jews, American Jews, and Jews throughout the diaspora. A broken heart for all of the precious lives lost at the hands of terrorists. A broken heart for the families, friends of the hostages, Israeli Americans, and possibly others who are literally reeling in pain, minute by minute, with no word or knowledge of their loved ones' whereabouts. Attending rallies and gatherings and services this week, including being with you all here today, definitely provides some comfort. Comfort in knowing that we are not alone. Comfort confirming what we know, that the Jewish people are resilient. Comfort knowing that Israel is strong. Comfort knowing that we will not let the terrorists win. And comfort knowing that we as Americans continue to stand for democracy, for freedom. Comfort knowing that collectively, collectively we stand with the people of Israel as they defend themselves. And comfort knowing that we can continue and will continue to stand in support of Israel. And yes, we stand against hate. We stand against evil. We most definitely stand here today against the terrorist organization of Hamas. And every day since the terrorist attack, we stand together in prayer, in providing strength to the victims, family members, friends, and hostages still in harm's way. We often say, never again. But on October 7, 2023, never again came again. As expressed in Psalm 133, how good it is to come together and demonstrate solidarity. Am Yisrael Chai! Am Yisrael Chai! Am Yisrael Chai! Am Yisrael Chai! Am Yisrael, Am Yisrael, Am Yisrael Chai! Od Avinu Chai! Good evening! We don't hurry, it's afternoon still, but it's coming evening. Shabbat is on its way. As a third generation Washingtonian, as a proud Jewish American, it's heartening to see so many of you, friends, allies, neighbors, 
Washingtonians here standing together, supporting each other, grieving together. Like many of you, I have family and friends in Israel. I've traveled there many times. Like many of you watching the searing images this past week has been painful, infuriating. It's been personal. The kidnapping and brutal killing of Israeli civilians, of innocent children, parents and seniors are acts of hate committed by a terrorist organization fueled by a hatred for Jews acts of a terrorist organization whose stated mission is to destroy the state of Israel and wipe Jews from the face of the earth. Of course, the state of Israel has every right to defend itself. Of course. But tragically, Hamas's hate has led not only to the loss of innocent Jewish lives in Israel, but to the loss of innocent Palestinian lives in Gaza. And we know that hatred is not limited to the Middle East. We have a growing epidemic of hate right here in the United States. White supremacy and racism, homophobia and transphobia, Islamophobia and, yes, anti-Semitism, all on the rise. And that hate inevitably finds its way here to Washington, D.C., to our nation's capital. Hamas's anti-Semitic terrorism 6,000 miles away is likely to result in increased hate and hate crime right here. People are already exploiting the situation in Israel and Gaza, spreading bigotry, discrimination, and extremism. As the elected chief law officer of the District of Columbia, I say to you in no uncertain terms, hate will not be tolerated in the District of Columbia. It will not be excused. It will not be ignored. It will not be pushed under the rug. Hate is dehumanizing. It depends on denying the fundamental humanity of other people. People who may look different, people who may pray differently, or who live in different neighborhoods. Our response in moments like these sets a precedent for children and generations to come. Our children are not born with hate. They learn how to hate by observing the actions and behavior of those around them. Right now, Jewish people are reeling. We are hurting. We are grieving. And as we stand together with Israel and with Israeli families at a time of unimaginable pain, we can model how grieving is different than hatred. I want you to know that the D.C. Office of Attorney General is committed to combating hate wherever it raises its ugly head wherever it raises its head. Our commitment to the rule of law, to our commitment to our democratic values, and our commitment to tikkun olam, to repairing this broken world. It requires that we continue to stand together, shoulder to shoulder, in the face of hate, in pursuit of peace, and in support of our shared humanity. Shabbat Shalom. Before we introduce our next speaker, I just want to let you know that I do have statements, but I'm not going to read them. But we have statements of support from Governor Youngkin. We have statements of support from uh, Attorney General Jason Yaris in Virginia. And we have a statement of support from Senator Chris Van Hollen. And Ben Cardin would be with us today, but he has COVID, but he's recovering well and he's doing just fine. I'd like to note some of the other local elected officials in the audience. If I don't, mention your name. Don't get angry. Give us a second. We'll find out. And just let, let us know and we will think. Council, Council Chairman Mendelson. Council members Allen, Bonds, Fruman, McCuffin, Nadal, Pinto, and White, DC Shadow Senator Paul Strauss, Maryland Secretary of State, who I also took to Israel, Susan Lee, Judge Chung Park, thank you for your support. Saswan Hassan, the Minister for Public Diplomacy at the Embassy of Israel, Delegate Jared Solomon, and Delegate Joe Vogel. If I haven't mentioned you, Please come up and we will mention you. Now, my, now it's my uh, pleasure to introduce Rabbi Levi Shemtov, head of American Friends of the Chabad, of the Lubavitch. Shalom to you all, and thank you everyone for coming and showing support across the Jewish community and those beyond the community not only as well, but especially the Jewish people have survived because of our articles of faith in God.
our strength and unity and our friendship from people beyond our own nation. This is a Torah, a copy of a Torah. And across the world, everywhere outside Israel, tomorrow we will begin to read the Torah anew. And the first passage of the Torah is Bereshis Bara Elohim es Hashemayim Esores. In the beginning, God created the heaven and the earth. And Rashi, the classic commentator, says if the whole idea of the Torah is to do his vote, to do good deeds, why does the Torah start with the creation of the world? And he writes, and this was 1,000 years ago, approximately, that there will come a time that the nations of the world will tell your people, the Jewish people, that you are thieves. You've stolen the land on which you live. And the idea will be to point back to the Torah, this text which has not been altered in 3,000 years. And we will say, no, it's God's land. And he gave it to us. And we will live there until Mashiach comes and beyond. We will welcome people of all faiths and all nationalities to visit in peace and be with us. But we will not allow them to violently mar the celebration of our faith. At the time of our rejoicing, Simchat Torah, when we rejoice in this tradition, the apex of the high holidays, instead of allowing us to celebrate our religion in peace as we do to others, it was marred by violence terrible, barbaric violence. We seek peace, and we were lulled into a sense that peace was going to come until violence came, the worst violence against Jews since the Holocaust. We want peace and will pursue it forever until we get it. They want violence and seem to want to pursue that too. We will get what we want. They will never get what they want. So what's our response? The Lubavitcher everyone said that that first Rashi is not only talking about territory, it's talking about ethics and values. What are the ethics and values of Jewish people in dark times, in challenging times? It's to do more of its vote and bring light into the darkness love into the hatred so that we can overcome it with positivity. And therefore, I'd like you to direct you to colleagues of mine there to my left who will offer you a chance for tefillin, to don tefillin, to light Shabbat candles, to give charity, to bring goodness into the world. And if you don't feel like doing it, remember, there's a soldier in Israel who would like to, but just can't. Do it for them. I will now recite the shortest chapter of Tehillim. It is two lines, and I will ask that you follow the words after me. I took up my time speaking instead of praying. It's two lines that said, praise God. I'll say the translation, then I'll repeat it. All the nations, praise Him, all the peoples, because the kindness of God is upon us, strong, and the truth of God is forever. So those who would like to say it with me in Hebrew, Hallelujah, Es, Adonai, Kol, Goyim, Shabhu, Kol, Haumim, Ki, Govar, Aleinu, Chazo, Ve'emes, Adonai, Le'olam, Hallelujah. And I close with this phrase, the central article of the Jewish faith. If you don't have a covering on your head, put your hand there if you don't have a cap. And repeat after me. The word said as people met their deaths in the camps. The word said as people saw last week that the life was about to close abruptly. And the word that we will, the words we will say to show that Netzach Yisrael and Yishaker, our faith will endure forever. Please repeat after me if you wish. Shema Yisrael Adonai Eloheinu 
Adonai, Echad. Hear, O Israel, the Lord is our God, the Lord is one. Have a wonderful Shabbat, and may we see peace in the coming days, speedily in our time. Let's have a few more. First, I'd like to bring up Michelle Hanakas, who works at the Embassy of Israel, to tell you her personal story. I will start by saying thank you from the bottom of my heart to everyone here in the United States for expressing their support to Israel. My heart goes out to the families of the dead, the murdered, the abused, the hostages, and the innocent civilians cared for their lives. My dad grew up in the United States. My mom has born was born in the South in South Africa. As a kid, I didn't understand how I fit in in Israel. When I asked my parents what they were searching in this country, they answered that this is our home. There is no other place to go. Years have passed and I went to university, traveled far to America searching for meaning. The war started. And more and more names of murdered, missing, kidnapped, innocent people started appearing on my phone and TV. As many Israelis can relate, many of them reminded me some part of my life back home. Kindergarten, elementary and high school, university, my military service and travels. Then, I found a meaning in every name that reminded me a part of who I am today, and it broke my heart. I want to tell you about Abraham. I had the honor to know Abraham when I volunteered in Poverty Neighborhood in Panama a year ago. Abraham taught young children how to write and read. He didn't know a word in Spanish, but the children understood every word and were so happy with him. For an hour, they forgot all the misery. Abraham is missing today for seven days. He went to dance and celebrate life, and we all hope this wasn't his last dance. For us, the war with Hamas is no other, there's no other option but Israel's victory. This is a war of good and bad, a fight for freedom and the right of Jewish people to live. We are strong, we are united, and we will not stand still when crimes against, against humanity rise again. When we said never again, we meant never again. Thank you. It is my privilege to be here with you. And now someone who we see often leading us in our Jewish community, Sheila Katz, ex-CEO of the National Council of Jewish Women. Hi, everyone. I just want to start, obviously, by naming that this is so personal for so many of us. More than half of the population of Jews are in Israel. And I just feel compelled to share the names of the hostages that I personally know who I've been holding uh, this past week. Erez Calderon, who's 12, Noya, Dan, who's 13, Sahar Calderon, who's 16, Ofer Calderon, who's 50, Carmilla Dan, their grandmother, who's an American citizen, who's 80, and Vivian Silver, 74, who founded Women Wage Peace, one of our premier partners in Israel. It's so hard to be navigating this when you can actually acknowledge that the people we're talking about are people, that are human beings, that need our help and our love and our empathy. We have to do everything we can to bring these hostages back home as soon as we can. At the National Council of Jewish Women, we care deeply about all people, especially women, children, and families. And we know that when terrorism and war happen, it is women, children, and families who often pay the highest prices in ways that are vast and deep and hard to hear. The terrorist attack this past weekend by Hamas was the greatest single mass killing of Jews since the Holocaust, and the trauma is still hard to comprehend. 
Hamas went door to door through Israeli towns and kibbutzim, shooting entire families, children, and the elderly, killing indiscriminately and taking more than 150 hostages into Gaza, including an 85-year-old Holocaust survivor who has already seen the worst of humanity once in her lifetime. They took the cell phone of a grandmother and live streamed her murder so that her grandchildren could see, and they surrounded thousands of young people dancing at outdoor peace festival and concert, slaughtered them and assaulted them and paraded their bodies of some of the women naked back in Gaza to cheers. These events have devastating impact on all of us, on the global Jew Jewish community, and the collective trauma of these events will impact Israel and the Jewish people forever. And with that, we should not have to convince people who claim to be our friends and allies that murdering Israeli civilians is wrong. To be clear, you are not a feminist if you can't feel for the Israeli civilian women, children, and babies who were murdered. We must be a unified voice against violence, and we must be a unified voice against Hamas. And this is why, in partnership with the families of the hostages, National Council of Jewish Women, our organization and advocates are raising our voices with its campaigns to demand that hostages receive critical humanitarian assistance, including medical care, and ultimately safely return to their loved ones. In Judaism, the commandment to free the captives is considered to be one of the greatest commandments. It is directly connected to our ongoing responsibility to work for justice. You can learn more and get engaged in our campaign at voicesforhostages.org. And as we stand together speaking out against violence perpetrated towards innocent civilians, we must acknowledge that Palestinian civilian women, children, and families in Gaza have been harmed profoundly as well. We don't cheer for their deaths. We don't cheer for their injuries. We must remember that in the end, the only true path to win is safety and peace for everyone, justice for everyone. And I mourn their losses that Hamas has caused as well. To close, even among the violence, devastation, and atrocity happening this week, I'm reminded of this week's Torah portion, Bereshit, Genesis, after the pain of this past Simchat Torah, we nonetheless begin reading the Torah anew. And we read the story of the creation of the world, and we remember that new beginnings are possible. We are not required to stay in the same cycles of violence and vengeance forever. In Bereshit, we find the verse that the ancient sage Ben Azai describes as the great principle underlying all of Torah that we are descended from the same original ancestors. We are all ultimately related, connected, all of our fates intertwined. As we endeavor to address the pain this moment, let us remember that sacred interconnectedness and work towards a future that honors us all. Am Yisrael Chai, amen. And now, I'd, I'd like, like to, to welcome, welcome up some of the several rabbis, Rabbi Adam Raskin of Har Shalom, to give some words. I'd like to ra also welcome up Rabbi Lauren Holzblatt of Addis Israel to read the, to say the prayer for the captives. Rabbi Steve Green of Agudah Sachim to do the prayer for the IDF. Rabbi Botweiss, my synagogue, Temple Beth Ami, to do. Um, uh, to do the prayer for Israel, and then also to ask uh, Rabbi Noah Diamondstein and Canna Rosalie Will to lead us in song. It may not look like it right now, but the Jewish people throughout the world, Israelis and Jews of the diaspora, religious Jews and secular Jews, right-wing Jews and left-wing Jews, young and old, we are all sitting Shiva. Our lives have been turned upside down. We alternate between weeping and stunned silence. For some of us, it's difficult to eat, difficult to sleep, to not constantly think about how impossible it is that so many of our loved ones are gone. 
But we are not sitting Shiva for one beloved relative who died. We are sitting Shiva for more than a thousand beloved relatives who died. Not of old age, not of natural causes. We are sitting Shiva for our Jewish family members, teenagers, kids in their 20s, systematically murdered in an outdoor concert. We are mourning for our relatives who are attacked and massacred in their homes. We are sitting Shiva for babies. So many precious, innocent babies brutally murdered whose tiny bodies were desecrated by the death squad called Hamas. And we are also in a state of suspended horror as we fear for loved ones, for grandmothers and Holocaust survivors, children locked in cages, abducted and dragged into the bowels of Gaza. The horrific attack of Hamas will rank among the worst pogroms in Jewish history. When we remember Babi Yar, we will also think of Be'eri. When we speak of Kristallnacht, we will remember Kfar Aza. We are all Avelation. Every single Jew is a mourner today. And there have been so many funerals. Every single day, more funerals across Israel. Cemeteries scrambling to make room for fresh graves, and we know that they will need more in the days and weeks ahead. But we remember the words of the 23rd Psalm so often recited at funerals and gravesides. Gam ki elech salmavet lo irara. Though I walk through the valley of the shadow of death, I will fear no evil, for you are with me. We are not alone. We are not alone on this sad journey through so much death and misery. We are not alone because of so many friends who we've seen today who have come forward to comfort us and pledge their support. From so many interfaith friends to friends at the pinnacles of power in this great country. And we are not alone because the Jewish people are one amazing interconnected family. Every single label that has been deployed to separate us or categorize us, religious labels, ideological labels, political labels, none of them mean anything right now. The only label that counts is that we are all Jews. <clears throat> and we will provide each other the strength to eventually get up from Shiva and to be assured that the Jewish story is far from over, that Israel's story is one of hope and survival and triumph. And today is no different. The Jewish people is not going anywhere. The state of Israel is not going anywhere. No matter how bleak it may seem right now, never forget Never forget that the Jewish people have looked into the eyes of evil many times before. We have faced the most diabolical, brutal forces the world has ever seen. And we survived then, and we will survive now. Am Israel Chai, the Jewish people live. The Jewish people will continue to live here and in our precious homeland of Eretz Israel. May God comfort all the Avelitzion, Yerushalayim, all the mourners of Zion and Jerusalem. And may this Shabbat bring peace to us and to all Am Yisrael. Eloheinu Matir Asurim. in their spirit and bring them our prayers that they may be protected from all harm. Implant understanding in the heart of those who hold them captive and return them in wholeness of body and spirit. Tini Tivuna, grant wisdom 
to Sahel, to the Israel Defense Forces, that they may secure freedom for the captives without loss of life. Grant strength of spirit and of courage to the heart of all of our sons and daughters, the sons of Abraham, Sarah, and Hagar, to release bonds of captivity and allow us all to live in peace and in freedom. God says in Tehillim, they shall call upon me and I will answer them. I will be with them in distress and I will rescue them and honor them. Please God, be with Sahal, be with the captives, and may we see them return quickly and safely. And we say, Amen. A prayer for Israel's defense forces. You bless our ancestors Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob. Bless the members of Israel's defense forces and its security services who stand guard over our land and the cities of our God, from the Lebanese border to the Egyptian desert, from the Mediterranean Sea to the approach of the Arava, and wherever else they are on land, in air, and at sea. And the Lord make the enemies who rise against us be struck down before them. May the Holy One, blessed be He, protect and deliver them from all trouble and distress, affliction and illness, and send blessing and success to all the work of their hands. May He subdue our enemies under them and crown them with deliverance and victory. And may there be fulfilled in them the verse, Is the Lord your God who goes with you to fight for you against your enemies to deliver you? And let us say, Amen. A prayer for the state of Israel, written by Rabbi Mira Regev, translated by Rabbi Levi Ramin Kelman, my teacher, and Rabbi Efrat Rotem. Avinu Sheva Shemayim, Shechina Mekor Ha'inu. Sur Yisrael the Golo, our parent in heaven, Shekhinah, source of life, rock and redeemer of Israel, strengthen and deliver all who stand on guard protecting their homes, safeguard and save them from any trouble and distress and bless their actions, hear their prayers and ours and deliver them. Save those who are trapped in their homes. Grant them inner strength, faith, and hope. Bolster them in these terrifying times. Send your mercy to the anxious mothers and hurting fathers and the children sitting in shelters. May it be your will to remember us, to take notice of us, to meet us with compassion, for we trust in you. Return all those kidnapped safe and sound to their homes without the spilling of innocent blood, without their souls becoming tarnished by horrific acts. Strengthen those who protect our holy land, soldiers and civilians alike. We pray, Lois Agoy El Goy Cherev, nation shall not lift sword against nation, and they shall study war no more. Compassionate God, please arouse your mercy for us, and may the verse be fulfilled. From the seed of peace, the vine shall produce its fruit, the land shall produce its yield, and the skies shall provide their, mo their moisture. I will bestow all these things upon you, and you shall be a blessing. Have no fear. And together let us say, Amen. We're going to close these prayers with a song that many of you probably know. You might have even sang it so many times already that it feels cliche now. It ends with the words, Salam and Shalom. A song of peace. And it says, may peace come for us, not just for us, for everyone. 
Let's sing that song anew. As the psalms say, sing unto God a new song. Let's sing that song like it's the first time. That song written by Jews, Israeli Jews, and, and Palestinians together. Od Yavo Shalom Aleinu. Somebody from our own community, somebody we're very proud who stands at the pinnacle of Jewish organizational life, the CEO of the Conference of Major American Jewish Organizations, William Daroff. It is an honor to be here with you during this difficult time. Eight days ago, I landed in Tel Aviv and took the train and the light rail to Jerusalem. As I was riding along Joppa Street in Jerusalem, I smiled at the bustling activity of hundreds of people at the Makna Yehuda Shuk and the even bigger crowds along the Ben Yehuda Street pedestrian mall. I caught myself thinking of a darker time, having been in Israel many times before, during, and after COVID. I thought, seeing the hordes of excited people celebrating the Hagim, that Israel was back, that we were finally in a post-COVID time, that we could be together without the fear that had dominated our lives. I went down to the Kotel, the Western Wall, on Friday night for Shabbat and Simchat Torah celebrations. The joy of the evening, dancing with the Torah, left me with a big smile for the next 12 hours or so. And then on Saturday morning, I, along with thousands of others, was awoken by rocket alerts in Jerusalem. Slowly, slowly the news trickled in. Rumors, hearing of and then seeing the barbarity that befell our people. Now our minds are filled with footage, images, testimony, so raw and painful. We all wish we had never seen, but we must force ourselves to see. 
and we must force the world to see. The world must witness and continue to witness the ISIS-style savagery of Hamas. Thank you. We'll allow the siren to uh, give echo to that. Hamas, whose charter dedicates to the destruction of Israel and the Jewish people. Hamas, sponsored by the Islamic Republic of Iran. Hamas, which murders and takes people hostage for one reason and one reason only, because they were Jewish. Hamas has perpetrated evils on the Jewish people, the likes of which we have not seen since the Third Reich. And I do not need to describe the horrors we have all seen. If there is ever any doubt about Hamas' true intent, it is now clear to the world. We appreciate the kind words and actions of our leaders, particularly President Biden, and the bipartisan support of Congress and other elected officials, such as those that we saw here today, in support of Israel's right to defend herself and secure herself. But while those statements are important, the real anecdote is unity. We are now in another dark time, but I'm so proud that we are coming together as a people to remind ourselves that as Jews we love and care for one another. The Jewish people have always been a resilient people because in times of crisis, we manage to keep an eye on the horizon to a time in the future when life will be bright again. But we're not there yet, and we may not be there for quite a while. But I am optimistic that we will be. The lesson of the last 3,500 years of our peoplehood is this. As a people, we are stronger when we are one. We are stronger when we are unified. That is how we will get through the darkness, together arm in arm, feeling our way one step at a time. To our Israeli brothers and sisters, we are here with you. We are in the darkness with you. We will get through this together. And to the brave men and women of the Israel Defense Force, for them to thrive and succeed over the coming weeks and months, we must be unified in prayer and support. We will succeed together. So my friends, please join me in coming together to tell the world once and for all, Am Yisrael Hai. One more time, Am Yisrael Hai. Shabbat Shalom and thank you. Now it's my pleasure to bring up to my dear friends and colleagues, Meredith Lysel, the Regional Director of ADL, Alan Ronkin, the Regional Director of the American Jewish Committee. That was 15 seconds, ladies and gentlemen. That's the amount of time that someone in Sterot or Faza or some of the other communities down south, that is the amount of time they had to be awoken from their beds, to gather their children, and to get into safe rooms before rockets fell on them. That was 15 seconds. It seemed like an eternity. Imagine. I'm standing here today because of Kfil, nine months old, being held by Hamas in Gaza. I'm standing here today because of Roy, who lost his life defending other soldiers, saved 12 soldiers. I'm standing here today because of Nathan, Nathan, one of the students in AJC's Leaders for Tomorrow program, who now stands on the Gaza border as a paratrooper. I'm standing here because of Jordana, who left her graduate program and went back to the Army, and is standing training soldiers to do what they need to do. And finally, I'm standing here because of Awad Darwashe, that's a name you're not going to hear very much. Arwad Damasha is a Palestinian Muslim who was a, para, who was a paramedic who saved lives during the attack on the music festival and lost his life as a result. Hamas does not discriminate. Hamas kills Israelis no matter who they are. 
but they aim for Jews. My friends, we must think about those hostages. We need to say to the world and say to our friends, help our people go. Help our people go, Mr. President. Help our people go, members of Congress. Help our people go, members of the diplomatic corps. My friends, in Egypt, we all said, let our people go. Let me hear you say it. Let our people go. Let our people go. Let our people go. And to the animals of Hamas, I say, you know where to go. Like you, I have been watching the horrific events happening in Israel unfold since Saturday. This is the deadliest attack on Jews since the Holocaust, a statement that is almost too painful to say. From ADL's perspective, as the oldest global organization fighting anti-Semitism, hate, extremism, and violence, this unprovoked massacre unambiguously exposes Hamas for what it is, one of the most vicious and violent hate groups in the world. We are reminded that we need to take our enemies seriously, because when hardened anti-Zionists and violent extremists in Gaza or Tehran or here in D.C. serially demonize and dehumanize the Jewish state, it leads to the dehumanization of all Jewish people wherever they may be. Historically, we know that activity in Israel sparks anti-Semitism around the world, including in the United States. This is a moment when we need all people of good conscience to stand with Israel, stand with civilians, stand against evil, stand against hate. Israel has every right to defend itself from acts of war and terrorism. ADL is proud ADL is proud to stand with Israel and the Israeli people during this incredibly difficult time. We will continue to come together to stand in solidarity with Jews and Israelis everywhere. In this moment, I stand here unapologetically, unequivocally, unshakably with the state of Israel. I pray for the safety of our friends, families, colleagues and loved ones, and for the safety of every single Israeli, irrespective of their backgrounds. Am Yisrael Chai. Sintram Kothwa, who is with the uh, Secretary of the Trenton Mission at the Washington Regional Center of the Hindu Community, has, is here with us, but has generally given up his speaking time. We are going to hear from one last individual, Avner Cohen Zamir, teacher at the Goddessman Day School, who grew up on, Kip who grew up on Kippus near Ode, which was attacked by Hamas, and then we will conclude with the Star Spangled Banner and Hatikva. On Friday night, the ground fell out from under me. I wake up from a telephone call from my sister, quote, something terrible is happening in your old, end quote. Immediately afterwards, messages from my father. In our family group chat read, quote, there are terrorists outside the house. They are entering the house. They are trying to break the door of our bomb shelter. Save us. End quote. Afterwards, I endured an hour of terrifying silence, an hour during which I prayed with all my might that my beloved parents were murdered and not kidnapped. The relief of the message from my mother that 
read, quote, we are okay, end quote, was mixed with the never-ending messages from my friends, quote, has anyone seen my parents? Tell me someone has seen them. They aren't answering. Gadi was kidnapped. Chaim was kidnapped. The emergency security squad of the kibbutz had been killed, end quote. Hours of anxiety that nobody had come to help them. At the same time, there were stories of braveness, heroism. Rachel, my good friend's mother, a 70 years old woman who held the door of two, to a bomb shelter closed with friends even during shooting from the terrorists while using her body to protect her two granddaughters. Youth who saved their families as their house went up in flames and found them a safe refuge. Others who went out with guns drawn against dozens of terrorists to try to save a friend. I prefer not to speak about the devastation and the destruction that the terrorists left behind. Kibbutz Niroz, the amazing Nevea Midbar, Oasis, the scenery of my childhood, the people who I grew up with are no longer. Niroz was a community of people who were loving, who loved their land. They helped their land flourish and dedicated their life to fight for peace in the greater area. Eighty of the kibbutz members were kidnapped and are being held hostage in Gaza. Among them elderly, mothers, gentle kids, even babies. Dozens of people were killed. Friends who I grew up with since the day I was born, my teachers, my kindergarten teachers, workers from off Greenfield, people who, whose door was always open for me, people who made it clear that their house was always my, mine, the green grass, the manicured gardens, the houses on the kibbutz, everything went up in flames. I am not a political person. I do not know how to solve this bloody conflict that haunted us for many years, but I am a human. And I know the most important thing for us right now, for the children of the kibbutz members, for the grandmother and the mother whose kids and grandchildren are being held hostage at the evil hands of Hamas, is to enable the immediate transfer of medications and medical supplies to the hostages, some of whom are older and need medication in order to continue living. And afterwards, we must bring about the immediate release. We must exert political and humanitarian pressure to ensure this is done and done immediately. Afterwards, we will need to join together to recreate and rebuild the beautiful Garden of Eden that once was Kibbutz Niroz. We will not rest until our friends return to their fragmented families. With a broken heart, I beg all of you to heed my father's earth-shattering, chilling words that I received in a WhatsApp message nearly a week ago. Asilu, save us. I also want to mention how this has hit home in our own community. How many of you know somebody who was killed, taken hostage, or been mobilized for combat in Israel? Look around you, everybody. The major overwhelming majority of our hands were raised. Many of you know our Jewish community leader, Norman Goldstein, who was the head of the day school and the president of the JCRC. His grandnephew is missing. His grand, his grandnephew was a combat medic lost his arm when a, in a terrorist attack, put a tourniquet on himself, and they don't know where he is, and they think he's been taken, and they think he's been taken hostage. Please send your prayers to Norman and his family, and do everything we can to bring our friends home. I'm now going to ask the sponsors of the rally, the AJ Committee, lay leadership, um, JCRC lay leadership, ADL lay leadership, JC, um, ADL AGC, JCRC Federation, Anybody who was on the white tent who'd like to join us, we're going to stand as we sing for the Star Spangled Banner, and we're going to stand as we sing for Hatikva. The woman who is singing this song is um, Shana, Ra Shana Rachel, whose brother has been mobilized and is currently serving on the IDF near the Gaza border. Shana, please lead us. Twilight. 
Take 